So every year, we load up our family into an RV, and we head, head out on a Griswold adventure. Last summer, we ended up going to Lake Tahoe, and we stayed at an RV park at the south end of Lake Tahoe called Camp Richardson. And every day, we'd wake up, and we'd end up going to the beach. And to get to the beach was a little bit of a challenge. Um, we have five kids, a little girl in the wheelchair, and we'd have to go through the RV park, cross the main road, um, down a blacktop about a mile, and then we'd end up kind of where the restaurants and the bathrooms were at, and then traverse over some rocks and dirt until eventually we ended up at the beach, and then we'd stake our claim. And one morning in particular, I remember setting out my towel, I'm ready to soak up some sun, swim in the water, when my youngest, Emilio, um, comes to me and says, Dad, I need to use the bathroom. I thought, Emilio, why didn't you tell me this 20 minutes ago when we were walking by the bathroom? And I said, okay, I'll ask another question. Emilio, do you have to go number one or number two? He says, Dad, I've got to go number one. I thought, awesome. I can continue to be lazy on my towel here, and I can teach my son one of the finer points about being a young man is going to the bathroom outside. <laughs> so I said, Emilio, here's what you're going to do. You're going to walk down to the water, get in the water, and just go pee in the water. And he looked at me kind of strange, but then with all the excitement and energy of a five-year-old, sprinted down to the water. And you've got to remember, this is Lake Tahoe, the middle of summer, it's around lunchtime, the beach is packed. And my wife and I watch as Emilio enters the water up to his ankles, he looked back at my wife and I, dropped his swim trunks, and peed in the water <laughs> with everybody watching. And we we're thinking, okay, maybe all isn't lost, maybe he'll just continue to play in the water, or maybe they won't realize he's our kid. Uh, not a chance. Emilio sprinted back up to tell me all about the new thing that he had done. And of course, all the eyes of the beachgoers converge upon him, fall upon my wife and I, judging us as horrible parents. And even though I was red-faced and embarrassed, Emilio was just the opposite. He was excited. He was energetic. He had just done something new that dad had asked him to do. Now, I tell you this story for two reasons. One, it's funny, but two, and more importantly, is I believe it gives us some insight into the inner workings of the mind of a child and the attributes that they possess that truly lead to fulfillment. It's something I call the essence of Emilio. Now, I formulated this idea over the last few years as I've coached a lot of youth athletics and I've watched my own children grow. Simply put, the essence of Emilio is living life to its fullest. It's living a life without any limitations. It's a life of love, energy, excitement, authenticity. All the attributes that I believe children possess, but sometimes as adults, we tend to forget or lose altogether. And I really started to contrast this essence of Emilio with the work that I was engaged in. I've been in the training space for the last 16 years, and three years ago, I started an organization that focused on coaching adults in the personal development improvement space. And we've been fortunate to work with some amazing thought leaders in that space, such as Dr. Joe Vitale, Dennis Waitley, and the Ziegler Corporation. And over, that year, over the last three years, we've coached tens of thousands of individuals. And I noticed, started noticing a trend that would happen. Um, these individuals first begin with the essence of Emilio, but then tend to seem to lose it. And to really depict this trend, I want to I utilize one of our students that I'll call Sarah. And because I believe Sarah embodies a vast majority of the students we've worked with, as well as I think a good demographic of the adult population. When Sarah came to us, she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. She had a difficult childhood. She had a marriage that ended in divorce because of um, an, an abusive relationship. She didn't have the best relationship with her children. And she described her situation this way. She said, I feel like I'm in a cold, dark, empty room. The only voice I hear is my own. And maybe some of you have felt this way before, or maybe you know somebody that's felt this way. And Sarah wasn't alone, and I wanted to understand why. Why does this happen where we're all born with this essence of Emilio, and then it seems to go away? So I decided to poll our student base, and I sent a poll out to about 20, 25,000 different students, and I found the data was very interesting. And generally speaking, what we found out is the older you get in life, the internal suffering seems to increase. And we asked them some questions to really dig and find out why that was. We said, what is the pain you're experiencing? And the pain was that they felt that they were existing rather than living, just going through the motions. We said, what are the symptoms of this pain? And their lives were ruled by 
fear, doubt, anxiety, disappointment, depression. What was your greatest fear? It was the fear of failure. And it seems to culminate at death where Business Insider magazine did a study and they asked people on their deathbed, what was their biggest regret? And overwhelmingly, the response was that they didn't live a life full to their capacity, either by the decisions they made or they didn't make, knowing that they didn't accomplish even half of the goals that they'd set out to accomplish. But what really gets me excited is not this where we're going, but where Sarah was. Sarah was getting to that point, and there was a trend reversal. And she was able to change that. And ironically enough, I believe that we can harness this essence of Emilio by becoming bigger. And if you've ever had conversations with your children, it goes something like this. They want to be like mom, they want to be like dad or brother and sister, and you say, maybe when you get a little bit bigger. And you're actually right. And it's through this acronym, Bigger, that we can understand and harness this essence of Emilio. B is belief. Belief rules everything that we do. If I were to ask Emilio what he wants to be when he grows up, sky's the limits. Rock star, astronaut, farmer, football player. But he's get, as he gets older, he starts to put limitations around himself on what he can or can't do. And it might be by well-intentioned educators or loving parents. I could say, Emilio, don't plan on being a doctor or an engineer because those Petersons are just no good at math. And Emilio ends up not doing so well on a math test. Guess what? Dad's right. I'm a Peterson. Even though that's my limitation, I don't have to impose that upon him. Sarah, on the other hand, she was the fish in the fishbowl. And as the story goes, as the man brought the fish in the fishbowl home and he prepared his aquarium, he dumped the fish into a bathtub full of water. And what did the fish do? It didn't die, but it ended up just swimming in the confines of the fishbowl. Even though its whole world had just expanded, it did not move out of the confines and the limitations that had been put on it its entire life. It wasn't until the gentleman put his hand in the water to move it back and forth that the fish realized that it could do more, that those self-imposed limitations were stopping it even though its world had just improved. I in the now. Emilio doesn't worry about what happened a few minutes ago, let alone a week ago. And on the other side of the coin, he doesn't worry what happened you know, a day from now, let alone a month from now. And as adults, we are only allocated so much precious energy. And as we give energy to things that have already happened, and knowing we can't change the past, it leads to feelings of disappointment and depression. And on the other side, as we allocate this energy and these feelings towards things that haven't happened already, and knowing we cannot change the future, we all of a sudden start to get these feelings of worry and anxiety. And that's exactly what happened with Sarah. Her whole life was ruled by worry, anxiety, and depression. G is give, give love. Now, when we first received Emilio into our home, he was three and a half years old, we got him through the foster care program. And the first night that I tucked Emilio in for bed, I said, good night, buddy. And his response to me was, good night, dad, I love you. Children come packaged with love. They don't come packaged with hate. They don't come packaged with prejudice. They love, they, they give love and want to receive love. And Sarah didn't even love herself, so there was no way that she could even love other people. And when we go throughout life giving love and thanks, even in challenging situations, all of a sudden we start to realize that the ratio of negative to positive in the world isn't what it seems. It isn't all the stuff we see in the, the news that might perceive, perceive to be negative. We can have the joy in that journey and find good experiences even in challenging situations. G is grit. Children are, are an amazing example of grit. It's no wonder they learn to walk, read, talk so quickly. They fall, they get up. Uh, the two authors of the book, The Economist um, Freakonomics, they sent out a study to determine what attribute led to the greatest success upon people and achievement. And they felt that it was grit. And I love this visual. So many times in our lives, we push through challenging situations and give up. Right on the edge of giving up, on the other side, is where we experience achievement and success. And Sarah, she had persevered, but last thing she wanted to do was persevere through challenging situations. But as we do, it's usually when you're about ready to give up and you want to quit, and you persevere through that, that miracles start to happen. E is expect. 
Children expect to be great. They want to be like mom or dad or big brother and big sister. And if you truly believe that we come from a divine source, you've also got to believe that that divine being expects us to be great. He doesn't expect us to fail. He doesn't want us to do horrible things. We have to have that expect, expectation that there's greatness inside of all of us. Sarah had no expectations for herself. Her greatness had laid dormant, but it wasn't gone. It still existed. Rituals. So many of us have a standard that we want in life. But if that standard isn't backed up with the things that make, that make those stick is rituals. If it's not backed up by rituals, those standards mean absolutely nothing. Children thrive in an environment that's structured. The learning receptors are opened up and they learn a lot quicker. Sarah had no standard for herself. She had no rituals that backed that up. And a lot of times we say, okay, I experienced this success or I experienced this failure. It was some cataclysmic event. But success and failure just don't show up all of a sudden. They show up because we fail to do those little things or we do do those little things that lead to success and failure. Now, Sarah once experienced her life as a lonely, dark, empty, cold room. As she put this concept of bigger into practice, that room then became a warm, cozy room full of love where she had changed that reversal. She had a trend reversal. She changed that situation. And as we practice this concept of bigger and harness the essence of Melio, it sets us out on a trajectory that not just changes our lives, but it changes the lives of those who come after us and has a generational effect, and that can help create a real revolution. Thank you.